This is an RTX 3080 graphics card, and this is a five gallon jug of EC100 dielectric coolant. I'm gonna submerge this into a tank full of this. My name is Nicholas Johnson, and this is the Space Warehouse. Big graphics cards are loud, especially when they're working really hard. Mining cryptocurrencies causes your graphics cards to work really hard basically all the time. These two little fans have the unrelenting job of circulating air through a heat sink to pull as much heat up and off of this card as they can forever and ever. And as the air heats up in whatever room these guys live in, the fans will go ever faster and therefore even louder. Heat is the thing that will kill your GPUs the fastest, or at least it's what's gonna slow down your cards when you're trying to get your overclock just right. To combat heat, we tend to just move more air, which works great, but it makes more noise. What if I want a silent graphics card, but what if I want it to be a big graphics card that pulls like 300 watts on a supercharged overclock. This specially engineered and completely electrically inert fluid is one way to do it. Thanks to whatever magic is involved in thermodynamics, a fluid moving across an electrical component can carry away way more heat than air can, which means we can get rid of all the extra case fans and in the overclock you can turn your GPU fans down to a minimum also. So this liquid does not conduct electricity at all, which means sort of that it's no different than air when it comes to how electrical components will react to it. It's going to be really scary to do it, but evidently I can just dunk this $2,000 graphics card into this fluid, and it should run no differently than when mounted on your motherboard. Side note, I know these aren't supposed to be $2,000, they're not really $2,000, and I'm sure plenty of you got them at MSRP. Good for you, I wish everyone could. You might think leaving the fans on when running this thing under a liquid would cause them to work too hard and burn them out prematurely. I sure did. But the internet, and more specifically, the people who designed these coolants assured me that that's not true for two reasons. Reason number one, this liquid has some sort of a lubricating property to it, so there's no worry about an increased force when turning the bearings in a viscous medium. And two, these types of fans are not regulated by speed, but rather by voltage input. So when the computer tells these fans to spin at 3200 RPMs, it's not checking the actual rotational speed and then giving it more power until it gets there. It's just calibrated to know that 3200 RPMs is whatever it is, seven volts. But under this coolant, seven volts is gonna equal something more like 300 RPMs instead of 3200 RPMs. All those numbers are made up. This is just the gist of it. So when we tell the overclock clock to run the fans at 20%, they're going to receive a specific constant voltage. They're not going to check how fast the fan is specifically actually turning to save that whole thing twice. Running electronics under dielectric coolant will extend their life. They will run cooler under slightly less power and there won't be any dust coming up the works. And also, ideally, it should be really close to silent. Now, just because the coolant is really good at moving heat off of the GPU, that doesn't mean we still don't have to get rid of that heat somewhere. Unfortunately, due to the laws of physics, nothing can make this make less heat. So I'll be adding one of these onto the system. An air-cooled radiator. This radiator will be much quieter than an air-cooled graphics card though. This entire thing is a giant heat sink, so the fans can spin a lot slower and a lot quieter. And if you got a bigger tank, or if you're going to immersion cool a whole bunch of graphics cards, these radiators work in series as well. So you can go out of one radiator and into the next radiator to make more cool coolant. You can always add more to the loop or you can add more loops. I'm sure this one will be sufficient for this one graphics card, but if this all goes the way I expect, I'm not gonna stop here. I've got a bunch of ASIC miners at the warehouse that I would love to submerge in this stuff, run them silently and put them in like a 200 gallon tank. I may need a sponsor for that size of a project though. Cough, cough, engineeredfluids.com, cough. So let's try this out. And I think it's important to note that what you're seeing here is the R&D phase of my experience with immersion cooling. It's gonna be a little janky and I have not done this before. The components are cheap. I got them all off of Amazon. It's like fish tank stuff. And this radiator, I don't know what this was designed for, but it's gonna work great. I just wanna see if I can get this container running at a constant temperature and obviously lower than with air cooling with little to no noise. Here we go. Power source ready. This is just a little fan controller. Let's keep it controversial. We're gonna power the riser with SATA. Do you think SATA power becomes any safer on a riser when it's liquid cooled? We'll need some data. I'm gonna power the card with two separate eight pins. I'm not a psychopath. Okay. That's annoying. Good thing it's fucking dielectric.
This thing has a little lid. And I thought the radiator could just live on top of the lid. So we'll pump it into the top. I wanted to come back in, cooled coolant to come back in front of the graphics card. Turning on the pump. Oh, see if we can get these fans on. Okay, everything should have power. Let's see what it does. <laughs> it's not terrifying at all. Graphics card's running. Computer's running. I can remote into this computer from my Mac computer to control it, and then I'll just screen record the Mac. So, it looks like what we have here is Two 3080s running, 38 and 33 degrees. That one's water cooled, which is another thing we're just not gonna mention because it's just as efficient and maybe a little less bulky. Let's look in the hardware info and see some specifics. So we have 188 hash rate. So these graphics cards are hashing at 90 something mega hash. The GPU temperature is 34 degrees Celsius and the memory junction, which I normally hover around 100, uh, with the air-cooled cards is at 72, which is glorious. Uh, looking at the other one, even my water-cooled 3080 is a memory junction temperature of 92 degrees, which is normally awesome, that's fine. This full immersion at 74 degrees. So I'm gonna let this run for, I'm gonna let this run for like an hour, cause I know that this, the, the coolant that I poured in there is room temperature, so that's cool. Um, but as this cycles through, I wanna make sure that this radiator can keep up with dumping the heat out that's being used at the same speed that the heat's being added, right? I'll check back in and out. Okay, so here's what I've learned. About four hours have gone by. This tank came with this little electric thermometer. It looks like it's gotten up to about 41 degrees Celsius and it's staying there. And if I take a reading right where the coolant comes out of the radiator, it's 36 degrees. So five degrees cooler. This fancy little fan controller I got for the radiator has a high and low setting and I'm able to keep it on low and it's still able to remove enough heat from the coolant to stay at equilibrium. So that's nice, that's quieter. Pretty much if you have an air-cooled graphics card and you want it to be quieter, but you don't want to mess with the water block and all the plumbing but you do want to mess with all of this well you can get really low memory junction temperatures on a 3080 here's the overclock settings that i'm using it's the same for both the cards that are running on this computer and they're both non lhr 3080s this one is liquid cooled the normal way which is already a step up from air cooled cards and that's running in the 40s and memory junction temperatures in the high 90s then down to the immersion cooled one also in the 40s but memory temps in the high 80s which is just lovely to see on a card running at 95 ish mega hash per second if we take a peek over at my desktop which is running a founders edition air cooled 3080 same overclock and it's running at 95 mega hash per second but but its memory junction temperatures are at 104 degrees celsius yikes that's hot so if you want a conversation starter and low memory junction temperatures and also very close to silent operation, then dialectic coolant immersion might be for you. I think I can get rid of this low hum that you may or may not be able to hear. The pump is kind of reverberating off the table. The real test is going to be those ASIC miners at the warehouse. So let me order some more of this stuff and I'll get an L3++ under the goo and see what it does. I'll need a lot more confidence and maybe like a truck radiator to feel good about the S19J Pros. But maybe we'll get there. It'd be great to have a whole silent rack. Goodbye.